G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I've made over 40 videos on perspective, but I'm convinced that this is the video that's going to be most helpful to most people. Because I know that most people who are watching this have watched many, many, many other perspective videos before. And yet something hasn't clicked. After watching these videos, many people are left in the end thinking, I don't think I still quite get it because it doesn't seem to fall into place when I go to draw. In fact, if anything, sometimes trying to find the things in the videos just leaves me confused when I am drawing a scene in front of me. But I really think this video will provide the click, will provide the light bulb moment, will provide the, aha, that's what I've been missing. That's why it hasn't quite worked for me the way I expected it to. It's because of all the things that these videos haven't made clear to me, rather than any problem with the things that they have said. So I really believe that these five points for many people watching this will hold the key to why there is this sense of, I've watched all these videos, I think I've understood them, but when I go to draw, it just doesn't seem to connect in a way that helps me. And just before I start, let me say I've put the key point last, both because, well, I want you to watch the whole video, but also because it's a bit different to the other five points. It's bigger picture. It's a more conceptual point, but in some ways I think it's the overriding point of them all. So whatever you do or don't watch, don't miss that. Let's start now with the first thing that perspective videos don't tell you. But first, we need an example of the sort of thing we see in a perspective video. We have a line drawn across the page. We have a box that's drawn straddling the line usually. And we have lines going off to certain points that are called vanishing points. And sometimes we'll put a few windows and doors in the box just to make it look a little bit more like a building. And that's it. Sometimes the line is called horizon and sometimes it's called the eye level. The first thing I want to point out that we're usually not told in perspective videos concerns this line. Whether we call it the horizon or the eye level, there are some things which very unhelpfully aren't made clear to us. Firstly, it's if we're using the word horizon. Because if we're using the word horizon, the horizon line in this diagram may not necessarily be the horizon line in our reference or what we're looking at. If by horizon we're understanding the line where the land or the ocean meets the sky, to use the more common general understanding of the word horizon. And if we use eye level, the eye level as it's functioning in this diagram is not necessarily the eye level of people who we are seeing in our reference photo or in life in front of us. Personally, I don't know why we couldn't have called this the perspective line or something that actually doesn't have another meaning which can confuse us when we're trying to sort out a real life scene in front of us. In this scene, eye level is approximately where this yellow line is. And yet we can see quite clearly that the horizon line, to use the word horizon in the everyday generalized use of the word, is in fact a separate line. And if we want to think about eye level, then the three people we can see in this scene, here, here, and here, have eye levels that don't match up with each other and come nowhere near the actual eye level in a perspective understanding of the scene. So this other meaning, particularly with the word horizon, but also with an understanding of eye level, is why I think neither is a particularly helpful term and certainly can add totally unnecessary confusion in trying to transfer an understanding of perspective from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. And I've never heard of this distinction in meanings and the possibility of confusion pointed out in any of these perspective videos. Maybe I should start calling this the perspective line in all my videos from now on and start a more helpful trend. And the other point I want to make is that this horizon line or this eye level line does not actually represent the ground except by coincidence. And yet in the way these diagrams are always presented, it somehow looks like this is the ground line. This is the ground level. 
because that's how this diagram always looks, it looks as though we're looking at a box on the ground. I think it's very unhelpful that the videos do not actually point out that this is not the ground line necessarily. The second unhelpful thing that I think most perspective videos seem to leave out is that for our box, for our building to look like this and for these angles to work, then this ground has to be flat, has to be level. And that's clearly not the case often. The ground slopes down or it slopes up. But if we don't understand that this won't look like this, if our ground looks like this, then we can be left very confused. And we can end up with very confused perspective angles in our drawings with streets that we're not sure if they're going up or not. And we can draw streets where it's not clear whether the street is going uphill or whether it's just been badly drawn. I have two separate videos on drawing uphill perspective and drawing downhill perspective if this is an issue for you. But because it's not made clear that this only works looking the way it looks here if this ground is flat, we don't even realize that we're actually lacking information on how to draw this accurately in perspective. The third thing that perspective videos generally don't tell us concerns vanishing points. Now what they do tell us is true. Vanishing points are the points on either the horizon or eye level, whichever one of these unhelpful terms we use, where all the perspective angles of our box meet. One vanishing point for each direction of our box. But what these videos don't tell us is that vanishing points generally are not helpful for artists. And the simple reason is this. Here we have a building with a nice dramatic perspective. Now eye level is going to be about here. It's below the eye level of the person in the foreground because the ground I'm standing on is lower than theirs. And if we look at our perspective angles, which our theory videos tell us should meet on eye level, we find that's true. Now, even here, however, the vanishing point is off our paper. And if I were drawing this same size, I'm going to have a problem in that if I actually draw eye level and draw a vanishing point on my paper, the angle is not going to be the same as the one in my reference. But there's even a bigger problem with the vanishing point on the other side of our building. It's not going to meet on the paper. It's not going to meet on a second sheet of paper that might be next to it. In fact, it's not even going to meet on the table. And this is why vanishing points are such a problem for artists, because very seldom do we have room on our paper to work out where they are, because in life, they're almost never so nicely close on both sides to our building, because this is an artificial construct to present a building in a visually dramatic way, but the conditions with which we see this aren't often reproduced in real life. And concentrating on vanishing points, particularly when they can't fit on the paper, is a hugely unhelpful thing to do. And the fourth thing that we're not told in perspective videos with these little box diagrams is that these vanishing points only work for either this building or buildings that align in parallel planes. So what happens when I'm trying to draw a scene where these two sides of the one street are in parallel planes, but this cross street down the end is not at right angles, but slopes away at an angle? Because the vanishing point I'm using for these buildings, in this case a one-point perspective, will be no use for this building down here. Or what if it becomes even more complex, such as this, where the street curves around out of view? How do I work out vanishing points for this? How many do I have to use? None of these buildings are set at right angles or parallel to each other. And if you're interested in the answer to this, I have a video on perspective and curved streets that you might find helpful. What I think is the biggest problem though of these presentations is that we're not told here that we lack the information we need 
to draw any scene which is not as fundamentally basic as this one. We're really told just enough here for us to feel when we're drawing this that in fact we don't know anything at all. And my final point that I think gives a helpful framework to really understand the source of all of these issues in these previous points is that these videos, or at least the presentation of perspective theory in these videos, was actually designed for architects and for the needs of architects. They were designed to teach the format for visual presentation that architects would use for presenting their concepts to clients to showcase a building that was still in a plan stage to potential clients, giving a sense of appearance and scale and proportion, and to capture the whole building in a relatively small space. And it was designed to be drawn up with drafting instruments on a drafting board. Now, the actual video you're watching may not have been designed for architects. In fact, it may, as mine are, have been created by someone with artists as their target audience. But the content in the video has not been designed for artists. It was designed for architects. And the truth is, most of these videos, whether they're designed for architects or, or artists, are pretty much a repackaging copy of one that's come before, which was a repackaged copy of one that came before that, which was a repackaged copy of a teaching video that came before that. And eventually, the original parent video was one designed for architects. And this is why the scenario that these little diagrams present is so limited, why it's a box on a flat plane with vanishing points that are so close, you'd never see them that close together in real life. Because this whole thing is a theoretical presentation. It's not a scene that really you would find in real life looking just like this very often. But of course, the needs of architects are different to the needs of artists. While many artists do draw from their imagination and they create landscapes, urban landscapes, in a way that does have some overlaps with architects. Many artists draw from life or draw from reference photos. And for those of us who draw from life, what we need to do is to learn to observe what's in front of us and to copy that in whatever stylistic technique we have. We need to learn to see carefully all the parts of a scene of an object that we need to see to be able to reproduce it in the way we want to reproduce it on our paper. And the truth is most of us will never want to draw simple boxes on dead flat landscapes. And the irony is that these perspective videos with all the information that's left out of them, because architects don't need that information, ends up confusing us more than helping us because when we go to draw, we're trying to adapt a theory that simply doesn't fit what's in front of us. And at worst, we're trying to force over the top of what we see, a theoretical framework that we feel should be there. And it's because we end up thinking when the video doesn't seem to apply easily that I must have the problem rather than that the video presentation has the problem. If I draw what I see, and if I learn to observe really carefully, then I don't need any theoretical framework, partial or otherwise at all. Personally, I think understanding perspective theory is a helpful thing because it helps me to understand what I might be seeing in front of me. And anything that helps me understand what I'm seeing more will help me observe it more accurately, which will be helpful when I draw it. But the perspective theory becomes a tool to my observation, not to my drawing. It's still the observation, which is the key thing, the primary thing in my drawing. And this is why I have a number of videos on observation for artists, on how to look, what to look for, and so on. We might actually be better off putting less time into worrying about perspective theory and watching videos on that, and more time into learning how to observe and then being able to draw what I've observed. I hope that at least some of these points have turned on a light bulb for you and helped you think, aha, maybe I'm not the problem after all but that the problem lies in all the things that these videos didn't tell you because they weren't relevant to the audience, the architects that they were originally designed for. And if this has been helpful for you, then please share it with people you know. I'm Stephen Travers and whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, I hope you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.